So we're here today with Martina Murphy, who's the Director of Operations for Ireland and Scotland for Bright Horizons Family Solutions, and also a nominee for the 2014 Most Trusted Leader Award. Martina, could I ask you just to tell us a little bit about Bright Horizons Family Solutions? So Bright Horizons, we're, uh, I guess, essentially a childcare provider. Um, we operate children's nurseries for families, essentially, for children ranging in age from babies right up to actually probably about 12 years when children are finished in, in primary school. And that includes some after school and uh, summer camps and holiday camps for those children as well. And we also provide some other services to companies um, to help their employees who have other dependent care needs other than children's needs, so maybe some elder care. And now Martina, tell us a little bit about yourself and your own background that got you to this point. Well, I started work many years ago <laughs> as an idealistic teenager, thinking that to work with children would actually make a real difference. Um, and I started out in social care and moved through a variety of jobs and started to work actually in providing uh, nursery care in Ireland um, back in the early 90s when there was a real demand for that type of service and started working with Bright Horizons when we first came to Ireland in 2000 um, and have been very, I guess, lucky in that respect to grow and develop my career and to the current role of Operations Director uh, for Ireland and for our teams in Scotland as well. So education seems to be a really critical piece and preparing uh, these kids to go into education. Sure, on a daily basis we're not only caring for children but we really are want to provide exceptional and inspiring care for children which will help them to achieve their potential and in the very early years of their life that is when they are developing their own love of learning, their curiosity is developing and so you know these are budding scientists you know, future astronauts, presidents, doctors, dentists, engineers, um, all of the jobs out HR there. HR professionals. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. HR professionals, bus drivers, nurses, <laughs> and so therefore, you know, but it really, our goal is for children to leave us to move into mainstream school with a real love of learning and with that curiosity just um, ready. Okay. So the real formative years are critically important. So just in terms of that then, looking at Bright Horizons and what you do, Give me a sense of the culture, you know, what, what works here, who'd fit in um, and what, what are you trying to create from a culture point of view? Sure, so culture I guess is, is one of our imperatives. Um, culture, and we recognised a number of years ago that we could talk about our culture and our values but actually we needed to name them and we um, ended up naming them as the heart principles and that stands for honesty, excellence, accountability, respect and teamwork. And they, we feel, are really the five tenets that, that we function on. And so people, first of all, have to recognise that being honest and being transparent, being open in their practice is a key aspect of everything that we do. Um, if we want parents to trust us as our customers, um, we have to be open and honest in our communication with them and that includes how we share the good information, our achievements and the successes but we also very much share um, information with them that it's when, we're, when we've had a bad day or when we've made a mistake and we then work with them to find a solution or help them to understand how we actually go about what we've done to correct that mistake. Oftentimes we see organisations and they have these values and uh, they've been handed down from corporate and uh, it's like this is what you believe. Um, but you know they're not really living them on a daily basis. How do you kind of make sure that that transfer happens and that people are passionate about these actual values and, and live by them every day? I think for us it's, it starts before people join Bright Horizons. Um, we talk about our heart principles and our culture and our values at, at, at the recruitment stage. We talk about it in interview stage. We try to have those conversations in interviews where we really get a sense of how that person will fit in with those core values. And so it's, it begins at that very early stage. And ideally, you know, before we will take someone on and before we'll actually make a hire, we'll actually have a good idea about that fit um, with the heart principles. And it's a non-negotiable, just as and it's a non-negotiable that people are committed to keeping children safe and working in a way that um, helps us to achieve that key part of the work that we do. It's really important that they will 
we see that they can live the heart principles. So I'm just wondering, trust is so important in a business like this. How do you actually go about building high levels of trust here? So for me personally, it was very disturbing to actually see that children and families in centres didn't receive the care that they should expect, didn't receive, um, and that standards weren't being met. I think at Bright Horizons, we take many steps to ensure that our families can trust us and can expect and, and receive the care that we promise them, um, which is that it will be exceptional and inspiring, but that in fact what that means is that we train our staff to a high level. Um, we have staff who are passionate about the work that they do and really committed to working to care for the children, to keep them safe and to to enhance their development and to work in partnership with parents and what that means is that parents can feel that they can come and visit at any time, they can spend time in the centre, spend time with their child, spend time in their classroom, spend time with their child's key person, spend time talking to the manager and really understanding what it's like to be a child in the centre and so therefore um, for me that is really about reassuring parents and parents trusting us to do what we say we will do and to meet our brand promise. In this work you, are, you have to be engaged, you have to be really connected with the children all of the time um, and I think we, we recognise first of all that the need for people to bring their whole, se their whole selves to work, we recognise how important their overall well-being is and I think part of that is then talking about that with people, helping them understand that we recognise you'll have an off day or we recognise that there will be other things in your life that may affect how you're performing in work and giving them permission almost to actually be able to bring those concerns that they may have to their line manager um, and, and to discuss ways, I guess, to, to work around that or ways of facilitating them to, to still be able to work while things are going on in their lives. Um, and that's not to say, obviously, we hold people accountable, sure. but at the same time, I think particularly in this work where people have to be so vested 100%, you can't turn children off like a computer, so therefore we actually really have to think about person's overall well-being and think about um, how important that is, that, that we recognise that. Martina, a lot of people would have watched programmes about other crashes uh, around uh, the country uh, where standards were not adhered to. Um, what's your own uh, view when you watch programs like that about other crashes? Trust is our currency, you know, it, it, and really and truly I think that, as you rightly said, we have to be trusted by parents to provide their child with, with the care and education that they, that they deserve, um, and that's our brand promise. I think for us it is then, our staff first of all must understand what our key purpose is, and their role in that and I think understanding again we go back to the culture and our values of the heart principles and again that key value of being honest um, we have a very clear we've done a lot of work with staff helping them to understand um, what they should do if they see practices that they don't uh, that they have con concerns about, that they can bring those quite openly and honestly. So I suppose we have a whistleblowing policy. Um, we encourage people uh, and we have lots of mechanisms for people actually to report things upwards um, if they feel that there's something they're concerned about and helping them to understand that that's the right thing to do. Um, and going back to, I think again, staff knowing that their role is to protect children and keep children safe from harm and that anything that they're again non-negotiables and that anything um, that would put that in jeopardy is something that they must actually come forward with and that they have a, they have a, they're really, we hold people accountable for that. And how do you convince people to really use that whistleblowing uh, mechanism without feeling that they're letting their colleagues down as such? Yeah, and that can be, I think, what, what all of us would feel because, again, teamwork is a huge part and there's a huge sense of camaraderie, I think, when, you, when in, in the workplace, particularly when you're working in such a people-based um, area. I think for us it is helping them understand, again, that it is ultimately about how we keep children safe and keep children safe from harm and that if there's something that's questionable or of a concern that then they, as a professional, um, really have a responsibility to bring that forward and that it will be followed up on and I think that's one of the things that we, um, through our Great Place to Work surveys, um, people are actually a high percentage, over 90% of people um, have told us that they are actually confident that our clients can trust us but that also that if a wrongdoing is brought to our attention that we will follow up and do something about it. I think the actual, it's 
It's what you do about the wrongdoings and that they see that there's action that will give people more trust that you will follow up and that it's, you know, it helps people to really, I think, um, understand how important it is that they come forward. And there, you can kind of give advice as to, you know, when you started out, I think it was 30 years ago, you said, um, compared to now, what lessons have you learned that have, have changed you, Martina, into the woman you are from a, a leading a workplace? Good question. <laughs> So all those years ago, I think I started and I probably, when I moved into a role of more management and leadership role, I think I was probably your worst nightmare in terms of needing to know the details and micromanaging. Um, and I'm sure anybody who would attest to that. However, I think I quickly learned and came to appreciate that I wasn't really going to be very successful in that if I continued in that uh, guise and moved into a role where I think, or a position of leadership, where I realized that having the right people with the right information, um, doing the right jobs was actually going to achieve much more. And then I could actually um, happily sit, not sit back. I could happily do my own job and let other people do their jobs. And I think from a leader's point of view, that is probably a key thing that once you have the right people in the right world and knowing what their job is, and I think have an agreement around what your vision and, and purpose is, um, that then you can go off and you know, do the other things that are really important in leadership roles. Um, we talk about having inspirational leadership, but I think that for it really is once people know what's expected of them, then I think that there's 99.9% .9 of people will actually aspire to achieve their potential in that area. So for many people, they see a you know, great place to work has been one of these things that it's the big corporates, you know, they're, they're great workplaces. But oftentimes they don't think about this, the smaller things like a, a, a crash in their town or the like. Um, what would you say to you know, the, the people who own the smaller businesses? Is this a process that they should engage with, do you think? I would definitely recommend the process. I think that for us it's been a really valuable process because while Bright Horizons we aspire and have achieved great place to work um, listings in, in every country that we operate in, at the same time in Ireland it's, it's a, we're a great, we want to be a great place to work in every crash that we operate in. We want to be, for every, it's not just for a big organization and I think we can only do that we can I suppose think globally but act locally and we want people to actually think about their role and that for every person it's a great place to work so it's not just a big organizational aspiration it should be the aspiration of everybody in the organization and do you see that driving levels of pride in the organization Absolutely, and I think that's probably the thing that's, at, that's grown for us over the years. Um, this will be our seventh year um, to have gone through the process and to have, have learned from the process. And I think every year that level of pride grows. And I think for me, um, the work that we do every day, every individual needs to have that pride in the organisation. And what they consistently tell us through the process of Great Place to Work is that they have an incredible pride in the work that they do and are very proud to tell others that they work for Bright Horizons. And our customers, um, are the parents, that when we celebrate and share with them that we've actually gone through the Great Place to Work process, um, are, you know, really take on board how important that is and what that means to their child's carer and to the people who are providing the service um, to them every day. And so I think that that's hugely important and gives us um, a competitive advantage in many ways. One final question for, for organisations who are thinking about starting out on this process, just what advice would you kind of give them? What learnings have you had over the years? I would encourage any company to enter into the process and, and take it on board. I, my advice would be to approach it from a, as a collaboration from, from the get-go. I think the more people that you can involve, help them to understand why you're going through the process, uh, the more people that will appreciate and value it. I think certainly we've learned uh, over the years um, that people now come to expect that we go through the process and they are very proud that we're a great place to work. I think that we're, we've driven levels of employee engagement and competitive advantage by being a great place to work and going through the process. And I also believe that in terms of sometimes we're surprised by the things that we actually learn from it, things that we think we're doing well, maybe we're not doing so well. And therefore it can really help us to focus on those areas where we, we can do better and improve our, our work experience for everybody who works for Bright Horizons.
Fantastic. Martina, thank you very much again for having us in here to your crash uh, daycare centre in Blanchardstown. And thank you for being so open and honest with your views and continued success. And may you continue to be a great place to work.